while they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body. And then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many, he said to them. I tell you the truth. I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it anew with you in the kingdom of God. Interesting thought. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord. Amen. What was Jesus thinking about? If we put it on a balance, we see that Jesus was often thinking about other people. His ministry was for other people. He hung from the cross and he, and he said, John, would you watch out for Mary, my mother? What was he thinking about? He's hanging on the cross and thinking about his mother. Maundy Thursday, he's thinking about us in that we're going to, we, the Christian church, are going to have to continue in his absence so in John chapter 17, a wonderful section of Scripture, it shows what he was thinking. And what he was thinking about was the Christian church. And he stopped and prayed for the church, and, and he said about the church, Lord, I wish they could be one as we are one. And I pray that they would know me, Jesus. Wonderful prayer and then he prays for his disciples as well and he says lord i i gave them what you wanted me to give to them i gave you i gave them the word but the world is going to hate them the world is hating them and lord i pray that they would be cleansed that they would be sanctified by that word because that word is truth and he prays for us. And he prays for us that, that we would just simply know Jesus and know that he was sent by God. So his prayer, obviously, for the church, for his disciples, for us, we know what Jesus was thinking. What do you suppose Satan was thinking? He might have a smirk on his face right now. Satan might be thinking on, on Monday, Thursday, he's gathering his forces. And I want you to know how strong his forces were. He's gathering together Judas, one of Jesus' 12 inner circle disciples. He's gathering together the leaders of the church. And he's gathering together the governor of the government. He's got the government, the church, and one of his disciples in his back pocket. I think he's pretty confident. What is Satan thinking? What is the church leaders thinking? What is Judas thinking? What, wh what, is, what is representatives of the government thinking? Well, all of them are siding together and they're, and they're thinking that they've got Jesus right where they want him. If we've been following tears throughout the Lenten season, we've been saying the tears that we see around us, the tears of Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, they're ultimately going to bring us to the cross of Calvary. And there those tears are going to be dried. The same thing true with, uh, with our lesson today. So if we're talking about things that are in a common union, things that are in a union together, we're going to name three things that are, that are going to be brought together in communion. First thing. The first thing is the bread and wine are in communion with, together with, the body and blood. 
Okay, so remember this. I'm going to give you a quiz later. The three things are, first one, is the body and blood are this bread and wine. That's the first communion. And what that means then is uh, the ingredients of this bread and wine are pretty clear. It's Christ's body and blood. So when you look at ingredients, you're always looking for things. If you're a label reader, you like to read those labels and find out, now are these things good for me? Are they healthy? Some of you who consistently look at labels will probably find on those labels things that may make you scratch your head. Why is that in there? And sometimes it's things you might not even know. For example, carmine sounds kind of innocent, except it's what's used to make red dye, some red dyes, and it happens to be ground up beetles. That's not something I want in, in my food, and yet things that have red dye in it are pretty prevalent. Ice cream, yogurt, candy, drinks, anything that you might have a red dye in, you might say, why did they? And it's in a level of safety, so it'll be okay. I don't know. We like to know what our ingredients are. So now here we are, we're looking at the body and blood of Christ, the bread and wine, and this is the ingredient. And you think to yourself, I don't understand that. How can this be, this bread and wine, be his body and blood? Now, I have to tell you, don't let this throw you. The body and blood of the Lord are clearly there only because Jesus says so. And when Jesus says so, we have a custom that we believe it. It's not the first time. Scripture tells us something that we don't understand. The Bible lays out for us a trinity. God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And will we be able to understand it? We'll say, no, I don't really understand that. Jesus is true man and true God. The Bible is pointing that out to us, but you're going to say, I don't know that I understand that. The Bible tells us Jesus walked on water. How do you do that? I don't know. The Bible tells us that he raised three people from the dead, four if you include himself. How did he do that? I don't understand, but the Bible clearly tells us this. At the beginning of the world, the first six days of creation, everything was made. Do I understand it? Well, is it important that I understand it? The answer is no. It's only important that that's what God's Word says. And then I say, I believe and I trust you, Lord. Your mind is bigger than mine. All right, so here's the first union the bread and the wine, and Christ's body and blood. Let's go to the second union in communion. Now, we sing about it at Christmas time. So I'm going to start saying the words of a hymn, and then I'll stop, and I want you to continue. Hark the herald angels sing, Glory to the newborn king. Peace on earth and mercy mild, You got it. We sing at Christmas time about God and sinners reconciled. It means that they're friends again when they once were enemies. What made us enemies? Of course, that was sin that separated me from God, made me hostile to God. God and man were not friends because of sin. Now, with this union of communion, we are celebrating the union that God and sinners are reconciled because of the body and blood of the Lord, because he gave his body and blood on the cross. 
And so with that giving of his body and blood, God and man are now, are now friends, reconciled. So if I'm, if I'm looking at, uh, if I'm looking at uh, nutritional value, well, sinners being reconciled is one of the main things. It's one of the main things of Christianity. The fact that we are brought together, it's one of the truths of Christianity. So if you're reading a label, the label is going to have forgiveness of sins and God and man being friends at the top of the label. Now, we do other things in church. We do things that are sometimes fun and relational. Those things are good. And, and to be honest, we use those as opportunities to get to know people that maybe we can tell them somewhere down the road about this truth about God and sinners being reconciled. You see, but those types of relational activities, not the main purpose of the church, not the main thing, those would be further on down the label. What rises to the top are the things that are the most important. God and sinners being reconciled in the body and blood of Christ offering to us forgiveness has got to be the key and main focus of Christian preaching. The key and main focus of the forgiveness of sins that we weren't able to do on our own. And so the message of Jesus Christ making us friends again got to be on the top of the list so if we were enemies and we are now friends one might think to themselves where did this treaty come from it's a covenant of some sort well a covenant is two sides that come to an agreement you help me I'll help you let's make a truce but that didn't happen here because we couldn't handle our side of the deal Bible tells us we're dead in our sins. There's nothing we can do to make ourselves look better to God. He had to do it all. Jesus Christ had to do it all. So if ever there's a time in our life when we're going through struggles and we're looking at our sins and we're thinking, why, how is God loving me? Why does God want to save me? When I ever struggle with that, I look to communion and see this reconciliation that's coming together this union now that we celebrate between God and sinners that's the second union of the three I'm telling you about so now there's one more there's one more union that takes place for communion so once again bread and the wine body and blood of the Lord God and sinners. And here's the third one. It's people with other people. When you come together for communion, you are part of a group that is saying, this is what I believe. I believe these truths to be correct. Let me stand up and be together with you and support you and encourage you to know that these are the truths of the word. This is our common union. We are encouraging each other as we stand up for the truth. It is one reason why we ask people, find out what we teach first. Before you say, hey, this is what I believe, well, let's find out what we believe. And then we can celebrate more this, what we say is a common union. Now, we're used to celebrating relations with meals. Food is a great way to get to know people. Food is a great way to relax with people. So, so we unite ourselves around food and around a meal. It's because we have things in common. We like food. We like to eat. We like to eat good food. Why don't we do that together? We have this in common. Now for us as Christians, we have some things in common. No matter who's together, we have sin in common. We have a need for a Savior. We have a Savior in common. 
He's given us his word in common. And he's given us a blessing of heaven that we look forward to in common. And there's more than that, but wow, we've got a lot in common that we want to share and, and celebrate. But we also have in common our doubts. The doubt that we mentioned earlier, the doubt that Jesus said, this is my body and this is my blood, and we shake our heads and we scratch our, our foreheads and we say, I, I don't know about that. I don't know how that can be true. And we have our doubts about this and that. And Thomas had doubts. Thomas, after Easter, Thomas said, I'm not going to believe. Not unless I put my finger right in those wounds. I'm not going to believe. And Jesus comes up and says, hey, Thomas, why don't you put your finger right here in these wounds and stop doubting and believe. So the Lord wants us. When we get into those moments of doubt and, and, and we say, Lord, I just am not going to believe until I can touch and feel it. And so he's given us this meal that we can taste and touch and, and hear our own forgiveness. And the Lord saying, stop doubting and believe and know that these things are truth. This is a common union that we get to celebrate with each other. All right, so quiz time. What was the first thing that we celebrate in, uh, in union? Okay, good. The body and or the bread and the wine is Christ's body and blood. That's a union together. Okay? What's the second union we celebrate in the common union? Excellent. God and sinners are reconciled. That's the second union. We are together again. Friends when we were enemies. And the last one. All right, it's it's the common union of people to people. The encouragement that we have with being in a union together of biblical truth and doctrine. So these are the ways in which the Lord chooses to bless us with, these, with, with his love as he showers these things in this one celebration of, of this common union. The Holy Spirit gives it to the, the holy Christian church on earth and we celebrate this gift of the Lord. So we want to know what Jesus was thinking. Well, he was thinking about us. Amen.